Hello, my name is Eric Siegel. I'm the Business Development Manager focusing on digital isolation. I'm here today to demystify an isolation topic that hails from the world of mechanical packaging specs, creepage and clearance. When I first learned the terms of creepage and clearance, it was more in a legal setting. <laughs> Just kidding. Seriously though, creepage and clearance is no laughing matter. So let's get to it and talk about it. Let's start with some definitions. Creepage is the distance between two conductive points on the outside of a package. This typically means input to output around the perimeter of the package, between the bottommost input and output pins. Clearance, on the other hand, is the shortest distance between input and output through air. Usually, you hear this term used with the phrase line of sight to imply pin to pin just under the package. Being so similar in definition, I find this helpful mnemonic keeps it straight. If creeps hang out around your house, clear them away by going underground. Great, two new words for your words with friends game, but how do they apply to isolation? Let's hold that thought and make it real. Say you are going to a party and are wearing a brand new nice outfit. To get to said party, you have to cross a riverbank. If your only options were to in fact ford through 50 feet of waist deep mud or take a nice paved bridge, you'd take the bridge, wouldn't you? <laughs> Path of least resistance and all. So now say we've removed the bridge and instead kept bringing the two riverbanks closer and closer. If it were down to under 30 feet of mud to ford, you'd probably not go to the party, unless you were Mike Powell, the Olympic class long jumper, in which case you might just clear both banks unscathed. How does this all relate to creepages and clearances? Well, in this example, you represent current and voltage. The path of muddy riverbanks represents air, which breaks down at three kilovolts per millimeter and the bridge represents copper, which has a resistivity of 16.8 nano-ohms meters. With the copper present, everything is fine, but once removed and in too close of proximity, then air will break down and make it to the party. So hopefully you see how the distance at which you can clear the gap relates to the distance assigned to creepages and clearances. Calculating creepages and clearances will require you to know at least three things. Your isolator's working voltage, the material group, and then the pollution degree the isolator will be used in. These variables all play a part in the overall system considerations and account for how high a voltage you'll be using, which is the working voltage, what the isolator is made of, which is the material group, and the contaminants in the air, which is the pollution. Why do you need to know these things? Well, working voltages are a good indicator of how much energy is in the system. So in terms of our muddy riverbank setup, if you are going to jump the distance, did you just finish a bender of triple espresso shots and are full of energy? That could correlate to a high working voltage of 700 volts peak. Versus if you were tired and haven't been getting a lot of sleep and had low to no energy, and then you tried to jump the bank, that could correlate to more like 100 volts peak. Regarding material group, different materials have different dielectric properties. So in our world, would you be jumping off soft muddy sand that makes for a hard jump, or would you be jumping off of a rigid dried out surface that makes it easier to go farther? Pollution degree correlates to particulates in the air or on the board and translates into if a stepping stone appeared in the middle of our bank. Instead of having to do one 50 foot wide jump, you would now only have to make two 25 foot jumps. The combinations of these inputs will yield out the appropriate minimum distances to maintain in your design as given in your design certifications table. That being said, the values of creepages and clearances will be a vital piece of information when designing any circuit that requires isolation and should be clearly stated 
in a data sheet. Typically, it will be listed for the max working voltage the device is rated for and will state which material type and pollution degree is required. So in review, creepages and clearances are not just legal terms, but are in fact about safety. They are the minimum distances you need to keep in mind when placing and designing your isolation systems. Look them up in your data sheet and measure twice and cut once. Or as many times as you like, since you'll probably have an undo button in your design software of choice. For more information on digital isolation, check out ti.com ISO and peruse our offering of unique and diverse products. This is Eric Siegel signing off saying DFTBA.